going on. God's anointed now, generation. Come on, I want you to give Jesus a big hand of praise. Come on, like you're excited, like you're saved. Come on, like it's, come on, it's January. It's 2021, baby. Come on, help me give Jesus a big hand of praise. Somebody say, oh yeah. Come on, somebody say, oh yeah. Come on, look to your neighbors, shake them up real quick, right? Like, uh, like uh, if they let you, amen, <laughs> if they let you. Come on, somebody. Are you guys ready to praise the Lord tonight? Well, this, it's, it's going down. It's about to go down. I want you to look to your neighbor and say, are you ready? Look to your other neighbor and say, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, let's worship the Lord. Victory Outreach Chino, the Mother Church, God's Anointed Now Generation. Make some noise. Come on, how many of you guys are excited to be in the house of God tonight? Well, come on, I said, how many of you guys are excited? I want you to put your hands together. Come on, I know you know this. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
forget what you've done for me. You are faithful. Never fail me yet. Never fail me yet. You are good to me, and I'm grateful, grateful. How can I forget? How can I forget? to Kanye. Break it down real quick. Now, the last time I heard those words, it says, how could I forget, right? And I don't know. I, I just, I've been seeing a little bit of this, right? I've been seeing a little bit of this. Right? That's cool. That's cool, right? If God didn't save you, that's cool, right? But last time I checked, there's a bunch of people here right now that you've been radically saved. You've been radically delivered. God touched your life. You should be dead. Come on. You should be in jail. You should be overdosed. You should be right there. Is there anybody grateful for what God did? Okay. On the count of three, I want you to dance. I want you to come on, shout. I want you to yell like you never have before. Can we do that? Here we go. One, two, three, go. Sing, how can I forget? How can I forget? How can I forget?
want you to begin to lift your hands and begin to thank God. Because how many of you know he is worthy? He's worthy of all of our praise. Come on, like that song said, there is no one like our God. Come on, so I want you to believe that there is no one else, no one else greater. There's no one else stronger. There's no one else more worthy than he is. So wherever you're at, I want you to begin to lift your hands and tell him how worthy he is. I want you to begin to thank him. Some of us here may have a prayer need. I want you to thank him in advance for meeting that need. Well, come on, he wants to hear your cry. Lift your hands and begin to
Don't let it be more than a song tonight. You're worthy. Come on, tell him he's worthy. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Come on, one more time. You deserve the glory. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Because he's so good, he's so faithful, God, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, close your eyes. Thank you, Master. Oh, we worship you, Lord, here tonight. Come on, just take a second and just talk to him. Come on, we're going to pray for the needs in a sec. Just begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, God's presence is here. His Come on, his power is here. There's healing here. Come on, there is everything that we're looking for and God is here tonight. Come on, just take a second, a couple more seconds to press in. God is your healer. God is your provider. Come on, God is your friend, your righteousness, your, come on, banner, your peace. Come on, just take a second. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We need you, oh God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Master. If you have a need uh, in your life, I want you to lift your hands right now all over this place. If there's a need, it could be financial, it could be spiritual, it could be, you know, whatever. Because maybe there's a family member in need of healing, a family member in need of salvation. I want you to lift your hand real high. Come on, like the cops are... Come on, telling you to live that kind of high. Come on. So I, you know what that means? I surrender this situation to you, God. Come on, lift your hands. And I'm going to begin to pray. Father, I pray for every need represented in this place. There's need for healing. There's needs for change and salvation and breakthroughs, God. And I pray that every hand that's lifted, you know what that need is, mentioned or unmentioned. I pray you meet that need right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing and peace, God, and Lord, that you would just do exactly what you want to do, that this is going to be a new year of shifting, God, everything about us to you, to close to you in the direction of you, God. And Lord, we need you. We ask you, God, to do something powerful even tonight. We pray that you'd move in the name of Jesus. And all the gang says, come on. All the gang says, come on, give Jesus a big, 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 big round of praise. And you can go ahead and make your way back to your seats at this time. Altars are safely packed out, amen, with young people that are ready to give Jesus some praise. And I want you to actually remain standing if you wouldn't mind. Uh, we have a very special part of the service here as they could go ahead and prepare for that. Amen. So I want to welcome you guys to our God's Anointed Now Generation service. We're at Gang Night, baby, right here, 2021. And on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Sonny, Sister Kim, we're right here. We're the mother church. Come on, somebody say, oh, yeah. We are the mother church, and I'm excited for what God's going to do this year because I know it's going to be amazing. You want to know how I know? Look around you real quick. Look around you. That's how I know because of you, each and every, every single one of us here are going to make this year absolutely amazing. And so at this time, I have the great privilege we're, how many know that we're raising up preachers? We're raising up men of God, women of God. Come on, right there, ready to rock, red locked and loaded. If you feel called to preach the word of God, I want you to make some noise real quick. That was okay. I said, if you're called, you know God's called you to preach, make some noise. Okay, you're next week, you're the week after that, you're the next week. No, I'm just playing, right? But at this time, we're going to have somebody come up very, very special to share five minutes of fire, a.k.a. Fuego, right? And uh, the individual that I'm about to call up, man, I love this man. He's uh, He's been a little fireball ever as, from as long back as I can remember, right? The first time I met him, I saw him walking by. I'm like, hey, bro, right? Help me pick up chairs. He's like, 
all right, right? And he hasn't stopped helping and serving since then. Matter of fact, this individual, every time you see him, he's probably like in the middle of doing something for God, right? Uh, every single time, right? Uh, he's been uh, saved since 2009. Were you like... You guys know that year? Or what, what's, were you born that year? <laughs> Everyone went wild for 2009. What am I missing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, he's called to be a new gen pastor. That's what he feels God's called him to do. Uh, he helps oversee several things, but one of them is the media, right? He loves the media. And a fun fact about my brother is that he likes to eat pizza like a sandwich. I don't know what that, I guess you fold it in half and you eat it like that, but that's, that's kind of weird. I'll let him explain it. I want you guys to give him a big Vio Chino gang welcome right now to our five minutes of fire. Efren Longoria, make some noise. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Can we give it up for God real quick one more time? Can we give it up for God? Can we give it up for Jesus Christ tonight? Let's go. I know sometimes when they do speaking, they forget to tell you to sit down, so have a seat. I'll, I'll be nice tonight. Um, but I just want to thank God for my salvation. Um, I think a lot of people that, that stand behind here, um, it's a privilege to stand behind here. I don't, I don't take it lightly. There's, there's powerful men that stood behind here and, and powerful women that stood behind here. Um, Pastor Sonny, I, th I, think it a, I take it a privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ray, Sister Erica, uh, for the opportunity. I'm talking fast because I'll start getting emotional in that part, um, so I'm going to go quick. Um, but I just want to thank our pastors. I know I just said it, but I want to thank our pastors for leading the way, not just pointing the way, but actually leading the way. Um, I also want to thank Pastor Danny Carrera and Sister Eileen for opening their house and trusting some crazy kid like me because I'm crazy. No, I'm really crazy though. Y'all don't know. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to our media ministry, VFAM. If you're online, give it up for our media team. Our media team kills it. We got Ruby upstairs, Caitlin, Samara, the whole team right there, they're killing it. Um, it's a privilege to serve with you guys, our Sunday team, our Wednesday team. Um, but we're going to jump right into it. Isaiah 6, 8. If you could, they're going to put it up on the screens. we got that technical stuff now. And the Bible reads like this. I have heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. We're going to jump, we're going to go to another verse real quick. Romans 14, 12. And the Bible reads, so then, so then each of us will go, give an account for himself to God. And then there's a couple of the scriptures if you want, if you're taking notes. Uh, Mark 1, 17 through 18, Luke 10 through, I mean 10, verse 27, and then John 14, 26. I'm not going to read those because we'll be here all night. But let's bow our head and close our eyes real quick. God, we come before you today, God. We thank you for an awesome opportunity, God, to, to stand on the behind this pulpit, God, in front of some of the best leaders, upcoming leaders, God, world shakers. God, I thank you for the awesome opportunity, God. We thank you and we love you. And just say and pray, amen. So real quick, fast, um, what's the main topic we've been speaking about? Taking a sh making a shift to making our ability is tonight I'm going to talk about our ability. Yes, the last week we had Travis up here being a football player. He was, go he was doing all this, doing all this. But I'm going to do it like this. So sorry, fam, normally you don't turn your back to the crowd, but I'm going to do it real quick. Is you're going like this. You have to be able to make a shift and turn around to your availability. So say in, in, the, in, the, in, in a time where being available is when it's, when it's convenient. We don't need convenient people in our gang. We don't, need, need, we don't need, just need people to be available when the time's right or when it feels right. Or, well, today I don't feel like serving today, so I don't care about people today. Now, we don't need people like that. We have, we have people in, in, our, in our congregation right now that are sitting there that may be new, that may be the first time. And their availability, your availability will save souls. Example, Jacob in the front row. Because somebody was available and they did a house visit, Jacob's standing here, is sitting here today in the audience. Because somebody was available, we have Johnny sitting, I mean, Frankie sitting up here in the front row. Because somebody was available. Because somebody was available at a workplace, Edgar Cottle is sitting up here in the front row. Because somebody was available when Erica walked through the front doors of our Victory Outreach Chino Church, she's able to find a home here. There's many more stories like that. But if we're not available, we'll miss those opportunities. There won't be a Jacob sitting in the front row. There won't be a Frankie sitting up the, in the front row. There won't be a Caitlin Carreras directing a, a gang service. When it's not even, when you look at it, and you can be like, she's not, even, and she's not adequate for that position. But then none of us, I definitely wouldn't be standing behind here 
I definitely, Cruz wouldn't be definitely behind the piano back here. But as together, as we remain available, we remain ready and, and like Travis would say, ready to move, ready to turn around when we're, and in and out of season, we're available. In and out of season, because somebody was available, that's why Jordan's here today. Because somebody, I mean, I can list names, that's why Kennedy's here today. That's why Gracie's here today. That's why Pastor Ray's here today. That's why our VFAM is here today, watching because God is making a move, and are you ready to make a shift in your life? So real quick, let's bow our head, close our eyes. And I want to say, as I pray, I want you to reflect really quick, is your heart ready for the word tonight? X is going to come up here and, and blow the roof off the top. But I want you guys to know that, that man, today is the day we, we make a shift to being available. We make a shift to being ready for the call to come. And that's scary. But together we can make this through. Together in unity we can make it. When you're weak, you'll lean over and there's a sister right there to bump you back up. There's a brother right there to bump you back up. So let's pray with you. God, we come pray today, God. We thank you for the awesome opportunity, God, to stand behind this pulpit, God. We thank you for the awesome opportunity, God, to share something, God, that's been on my heart, God. God, to remain available in this season, God, that nobody's going to be counted out this year, God, that every single person, God, is going to jump into a ministry, God. Everybody's going to be jumping into things, God, that nobody's left behind, God. God, 2021 is our year to be available for anything you have for our lives today, God. We thank you for the awesome opportunity, God. And do stand pray. Amen. How we welcome up David. Come on, amen, amen. Come on, give Brother Efren another round of applause right there. That was amazing. That was good right there. That's good stuff. How many of us want to make that shift to be available in this season? Come on, I know sometimes I'm tired before gang service, but I got to make the shift to get out of bed and, you know, make my way on over. Come on, somebody. Amen. Well, right now I have the awesome privilege, the honor and the pleasure as the ushers begin to take their places and the ushers, usherettes begin to take their positions. Um, man, I'm just so grateful. It's my pleasure, my honor, man, my privilege to be able to take up the tithes and the offering because at one point I had nothing to give. Come on, somebody. How many, how many of us know what that's like? How many know what it's like to reach into your pocket and find some lint right there? Come on, somebody. I was so broke, sometimes I had to sell my lint. Come on, somebody. Um, but God has provided me with more than enough. Amen. It reminds me of a, a, a story right there in, in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 21. About uh, There was a couple people giving out of their abundance. Come on, when I was in the home, I would see people going and giving big tithes. I'm like, dang, I really ain't got no money, right? Um, but there was one woman, that's all she had was two mites. And sometimes we may think, man, I only got a dollar. What, what can God do with that? Right? But I want to tell you that a little bit in the hands of a mighty God can do so much. And so this woman, she gave all that she had that day. And the Lord looked at her and said, look, these people are giving out of their plentiful. They're giving out of their much. And she's giving out of the, the little that she does have. And I'm telling you, she's giving much more than all of them combined. Come on, somebody, and, and if you only have a little bit here today, I want to encourage you, if you're right there at home and you only have a little bit, come on, somebody else, uh, some of us may be on quarantine right now, come on, I haven't worked in a minute, but I want to let you know that God can do much with the little that you have. You're not just sowing a seed into the kingdom of heaven, but you're sowing a seed into your future. This may be the last time that you have a little to give, if you're willing to give all that you have tonight. Come on, this might be the last time you reach in and find some lint if you're able to give everything with all your heart tonight. Come on, and, and, and raise your hand right there. Come on, even if you got that dollar, even if you got two pennies, come on, somebody give that penny up. Come on, you say it's your lucky penny. Well, it's going to be lucky if you give it a God tonight. Come on, it's going to be lucky if you give it over to the Lord tonight because he's going to bless it, I promise. And uh, right there as we prepare our offering, come on, we have a, a couple ways that we're able to give. If you're right there at home, we have online giving. Come on, somebody, go to vochino.com. Go ahead and scroll down, click, click on the giving link, and you're able to fill out the information, and you're able to give right there because we make it so easy for you. If you're like, man, I, I don't know, my internet's real slow. I know all you guys have been texting. Come on, somebody, I see somebody texting right now. Well, go ahead and text VO to 457. Come on, a link. Our screen time is crazy. Come on, some of us, our screen time is crazy. We'll use that to give to the house of God. And right there, we have the traditional way, which I like to do. I got my envelope ready right here to give tonight. Come on, because I know that God's going to bless it. I may not have much, but God's going to bless the little that I do have. And lastly, you can direct deposit. Go ahead and uh, enter your credit card information because some of us are forgetful. We forget to take out the trash. We forget to do the dishes. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I'm forgetful at work sometimes. I forget to do certain things. Come on, and everything falls apart. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah. But you can uh, go ahead and uh, automate, uh, make your, your giving automated, and they take it from you so you don't have to forget. You're like, oh, man, God, I forgot. No, we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Go ahead and fill out your information, and God will uh, get all the honor and all the glory for it. Uh, so right there, let's just, uh, if you have your giving, go ahead and lift it up to the Lord right now. Come on, give it and lift it up to the Lord right there where you're at. And uh, let's just, uh, man, give with a grateful heart today. The little that you do had, God will bless you. God will give you more and above and beyond what you're asking for here this night. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I just want to thank you, my God, because at one point I had nothing to give unto you, my God. And at times I had little to give to you, my Lord. But now you have blessed me and I'm able to give in abundance, my Lord. And I, I pray that we would give from our hearts, my God. I, I pray that we would give with a cheerful spirit. And those who have none to give, maybe we're at home, my God, and we're even struggling to pay bills, oh Lord. And we're struggling to put food on the table. I pray that we would give the little that we do have and test you in this very thing, my God, that you will see our houses overflow with blessings my God we would see our family members healed my Lord oh we would see depression flee my God as we sow this seed into your kingdom this will be the last time my Lord and I pray that you bless this time of offering we love you and we thank you in Jesus name everybody says oh come on everybody says amen feel free to uh, be blessed stand up go ahead and bring your offering to the front I'm gonna go ahead and drop mine come on somebody I'm ready to sow my seed tonight because I, I, I need some things. Come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. But how many know that we're a church on the move? We got a few announcements for you guys. On Tuesday nights, come on, we have life groups. How many life groups we got represented in the house? Come on, shout out your life group if you're right there online. Oh, you can go on our website and there's a, a listing of life groups that are near to you. Or you could uh, check them out, hit them up. They're probably uh, doing it on Zoom too. I know ours does. Uh, we do it in person and on Zoom. I know many of us do that uh, because we, we don't want you to miss out on what God's trying to do in your life and in the life group. So go ahead and uh, check it out. Come on, uh, what life groups we got represented here tonight? What? What was that? I didn't guess that one. Okay, okay, come on. So we got life groups and we just want to grow together with you. We want to do life with the family of God. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, hit up your leaders and, and see where they can place you. See which one's near to you as we get together with our life groups. How many know what Wednesday night is? All right, we got fire, power, and prayer Wednesday nights. It's been crazy. These things have been heating up, these past fire, power, and prayers. I know uh, two weeks ago, Pastor Ray dropped it. Come on, somebody. I got I was getting saved all over again. And then this past week, uh, Pastor Joe came in, and he was dropping it on us. Come on, we need to get back into the, the fire and prayer so we can see God do something new in this year. So be sure to tune in online. We don't want to miss out. God's been doing something crazy. And if you have missed them, you can go online on YouTube, and you can check them out all over again catch up and as we go forward into this new season we want to stay in the vein come on in a Friday come on I heard we have uh, some some radical high schoolers in the house oh come on I heard we have some radical high schoolers in the house how many know that Friday nights we have high school impact sessions right there at 7 30 come on we want to see our, our our generation one for Jesus I know man when I was in high school I needed somebody to reach out to me I needed somebody to reach out to me, but that's what we're doing. We're stepping into the positions where there's a need. And we got high school right there for you on Friday nights at 7.30. And lastly, on Sunday, we got our celebration service. Come on, somebody. We're celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ is risen. Come on, that we have salvation, that God has hope for our lives. And, and in this time, man, we need something to celebrate. And we can celebrate that we can gather together with the people of God and get together at 10. But not only that, we have our, our new gen uh, sessions right there during that time. Come on out here, new gen's crap. And they've been setting it off. So we want to be able to uh, uh, get us in there. If you have young brothers and sisters that are in junior high, we want to get them over there and see God do something special in their lives as well. I know that. Come on, how many are excited for what God's doing in our church? We have much more to come. And to check that out, go ahead and pay your uh, attention to the screens for some more video announcements. Amen. to pray that we do not after 52 years of ministry get comfortable get settled or get distracted but stay focused and keep on praying and keep on growing keep on enlarging our capacity so that God can do what he wants to do in us and through us all over the world
Hello, Victor Arricino, and didn't forget about you, VFAM. Hey, you know, I wanted to come make an announcement about the fast that we're about to go into. Matter of fact, it starts on January 8th, it goes all the way to the 28th. Yeah, I know you're probably wondering, wait, it's only 20 days. Count the schedule, it's actually 21 days. But hey, we're gonna be having a powerful time fasting and praying for this new year. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah 43, verse 19, he says, I'm about to do something new. And that's what we're expecting God to do during this time of fasting. As a matter of fact, I wanna encourage some of you, man, get online, sign up, and you'll get the, the, the handouts that are gonna be sent out as far as how to fast. Not only that, but some prayer targets that are gonna be included as well. And then those of you who are real good at social media and things like that, man, start tagging us and posting things that God is doing, the, the miracles that God is working. Man, let us know the praise reports of what's taking place and that as a family together, we can see the powerful miracle working hand of God within our church. So I wanna encourage you, you know what? It's, it's only two days in, so don't feel, man, I can't do it. They already started, no. Join us now, jump in. Let's do this together so that come on January 28th, we'll be able to celebrate and be excited about what God is gonna do in 2021. This is our year. It's a, it's a year of a new season. God bless you and looking forward to hearing from what God is gonna do inside of your life. God bless. Here at the Gang Girl Discipleship Home, not only do you get to develop spiritually, but you also get to develop relationally and practically. We're able to get up every day, have daily devotions, we're able to see each other every day, do life together, and not only that, we're able to see great, great life things that happen in each other's lives. We get to see them get married, we, t we get to see each other get our first car, go to different countries. It's exciting what's taking place here at the Gang Girl Discipleship Home. Hi, my name is Gracie, and I've lived in the Discipleship Home for four years now, since 2017. And coming back home from the Urban Training Center in South Africa, I knew that moving here into the D-Home was the next step for sure. And I can honestly say that I've grown in so many ways, from the practical ways of living to my spiritual walk with God. And if you're watching this video, if you're here tonight, and you're wondering what is the next step for my life, move in to one of our Discipleship Homes. And I know for a fact that God will meet you guys there. Mama Church Gang, we want you to know what's taking place at the Vio Chino Gang Home. We know that God is raising up disciples for the vision here in the Mother Church. And here in the house, we get a hold of God together every day, waking up together, getting hold of the Lord in a time of reading, in a time of prayer, growing in the things of God. But also, we're just a big family. We do life together and we're, we're really a brotherhood and we found a sense of belonging here in our house and uh, we're able to grow, we're able to learn. We're all enrolled in Veti together and we know that God is raising up some third wave warriors here in the gang home that are gonna answer the call of God that God has placed upon our lives. And we're looking forward to a, a blessed 2021 to see all that God is going to do. Amen, God bless you guys. Yo, what up, gang? This is MTV Cribs, Gang Home Edition. Come check out the crib. And this right here is my doorbell. It works. Right here is a loft area. This is where we come to chill, you know, just jam out. And the reader's here. You know, they say leaders are readers. I'm a reader. You thought I just read the Bible? Nope. I read all kinds of stuff. The newspaper, cereal oh. boxes, I read it all. You see, we got the founders up on the wall. Pastor, we got our pastors right here to the left. Shout out to them. This is the backyard, as you can see, we got a little lounge area, a little chill, we got a little fireplace, you know? This is where it goes down, you know me, Big Frank, I'm always right here. Big Frank, I just be here to go. Tearing it up, you know me, man, but uh, you know, I don't wanna show you guys all that right now, you know what I'm saying? All right guys, well that's the crib, but you know, in all seriousness, uh, being here in the gang home has been a great experience. You know, being there at my parents' house, I just started to get a little comfortable. And as God was placing it on my heart to move into the gang home, I made the move, and it's helped my walk with God that much more. You know, being around guys who are like-minded, who are trying to grow in the same areas that I am. You know, we get up and we read together, we pray together, and not only spiritually, but also practically. You know, getting my finances together, my education, and it's a great time, you know, because not only do we get together and we pray and we read, but you know, we're a family. You know, we'll chill together, we'll play video games, we'll chop it up, we'll all just go and get food or we'll cook together and it's a family atmosphere it's a good vibe you know so if any of you God's putting on your heart to move into the gang home this is the place to be make the move we out
shadows, gone for the gallows, a dead man walking, to love came calling, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. six feet under. Everybody stand up at this time. Look to your neighbor and say, rise up. No, you're not convincing me here tonight. Say, rise up. I mean, oh, God has called us as the ministry of victory outreach, as the God's anointed now generation to rise up and to do great things for God. Do you believe that here tonight? No, do you believe that here tonight? You're not convincing me. First of all, I want to... Um, Welcome all those that are watching online, our VFAM, those watching on Facebook and YouTube. Let's give our VFAM a good, good hand. Virtual family, victory family, we thank you for tuning in, whether you're here from the local area or you're in another city, another country, or one of our Victory Outreach churches, we thank you for tuning in. And how many are grateful that the gospel is still being preached to the four corners of the world? What I love is that when seemingly like the world stopped because of a pandemic, the vision did not stop. I thank God that we have leaders. I thank God that we have pastors and founders that say, we cannot stop preaching the gospel. As long as we have breath in our lungs, we want to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful to be a part of an awesome ministry. I thank God for my salvation, for God's keeping power over my life. And God has been so faithful. Even when I haven't been faithful, he remains faithful. 
How many are, don't ever lose sight. Don't ever forget what God brought you out of. God has been so good to us. Can I get an amen here tonight? Like I said, I'm also grateful for our founders, Pastor Sonny, Sister Julie, are pioneers, cutting edge leaders. Man, we're, we're so blessed. We're, we truly are blessed with the best Victory Outreach. World renowned leaders, but if you had the privilege to get to know them, they're so humble. Right, Edgar? And they're so, so humble, but they've done so much. Easily they can be just kicking back and saying, Julie, we've, we've done this already. But they say, no, we, we want to continue because we have a vision, a great vision, and we want to continue to see that come to pass. So I'm grateful for our founders. Give our founders a good, good hand. Also our senior pastors, the shepherds of the house, Pastor Sonny Junior, Sister Kim. They're products of the God's anointed now generation. <laughs> Our pastor started the gang in 1993, if you didn't know. Pastor, if, if you're watching, I love you. I love you so much. You're Sister Kim, you're a spiritual parent. I mean, they're our spiritual parents. And they love the gang so, so much. They truly believe in this third wave. And I, I thank you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity so that we continue to flourish and be who God has called us to be. Also, our entire gang team, Pastor Ray, Sister Erica. Edgar, man, I, I love you guys. We can truly do life in the gang. We're doing life together, and it's so awesome to just lock arms. Lock arms with people that are running the same race you are. And so I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed that we're part of an awesome team. Also, my father's here, Xavier Sr. You know, gr growing up, I, I, I didn't truly understand why people would tell me, I love the relationship you have with your father. I, I didn't understand that. But as I've continued to grow in the things of God, I, I, I've understood and I, and I realized that God blessed me with a good dad. A dad that taught me, a, do a dad that trained me and discipled me in the things of God, taught me to be loyal, to be committed to this vision. Dad, I love you. I honor you here tonight. It's a, it's a privilege to have the same. I, I love you. Bernadette, you've been such a blessing. Our family, you've been a great, great wife. And, and I, I truly value and appreciate you as well. Amen. Last but certainly not least, if you didn't know, I'm, I'm getting married in March. Come on, somebody. I was faithful. Come on. So exciting. God's faithful to his promises. Sister Alexis, man, you have been in my corner through different seasons of, of my life. In February, we're going to be dating for three years. Three years. Come on, how many know we want the right one, not the right now? So for those that maybe you're thinking about a relationship, seek the face of God. Keep running the race God has called you to run, and God will put somebody in your lane. And God will confirm it by the leadership around you and saying, this is a good match. Somebody, there's somebody maybe watching online, you know, that was for you. Come on, don't look for the wrong one. So grateful. Um, if you could turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. We're going to continue. It's kind of a part two of last week. We're going to continue our series, Shift. Look at your neighbor say, Shift. The title of my message here tonight is, The shift I want to see must first begin with me. The shift I want to see must first begin with me. How many know it starts with us? Deuteronomy chapter 2, it's in the Old Testament, the beginning of the Bible. Do you guys have it? And that's the opening scripture that actually Pastor Ray opened up with last week. And the Bible reads like this. You have circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north. Let's pray. Father God, I pray you just, you have your way here tonight. Your, your presence is here. It's so evident. And I pray, Lord, that you will increase and that I will decrease, Lord, and that this word you gave me will truly pierce the hearts of your people. That we will truly make the shift and make the adjustments so that we can flourish in 2021, Lord. Because, Father, we know that you desire to do great things in and through our lives, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, and we give you all the honor and all the glory. And we all say, and we all say, you may be seated. Give your neighbor an air five, an air hug. How many know we're family here tonight? Now, how many are truly ready to make the shift in 2021? 
to make the necessary adjustments so God can move and work in and through our lives. Now, just to review, last week we went over a different, a few different things that we want to make some changes. First, we want to change, make the shift from being self-centered to being selfless, from whining to willing, from hardly working to hard working, from exclusive to inclusive. Also, and I love this one, from compromising to character. I feel like I can just do an altar call right now after hearing this, what we went through last week. But we're going to continue here tonight. And the first area that we want to shift here tonight is we want to shift from doing it yourself to doing it with help. You can never say do it with help. The Bible reads in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 that two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Here in the Victory Outreach, here in the body of Christ, here in the gang, we need one another. We need one another. We, we, everybody here, you have value. You, you have a, a role to play in the body of Christ. In this generation, in this gang, we don't, we don't need superstars. We need servants. We need servants that are willing to do whatever they got to do. So they can live a life that is pleasing unto God. It's said that many hands also make light work. If we all contribute, if we all put our hands to the plow, if we're all willing to roll up our sleeves, we truly will experience revival in 2021. I believe in this year more than ever before that we cannot just see the need, but we need to be willing to meet the need. This is going to be a year where people are going to be included to help build different ministries. There's a lot of opportunity for ministry involvement tonight in this year. There may be somebody here that you possibly have been spectating for a little bit too long. And now it's time for you to participate and saying, God, if you can use my life, here I am ready and willing. Use me today. You notice that song we sing, it says, don't use me tomorrow, not next week, not next year when I have it all together, but it's saying, use me today. Is there anybody here tonight that wants to be used today? To saying, God, I want to live my life as a living sacrifice, that my life is not my own. I surrender everything unto you. You see, what I've learned in ministry, that there's people that, they love the part about Jesus being Savior, meaning that he, he helps get us out of messes that possibly we put ourselves in. When we talk to the girl that we shouldn't have been talking to, and then we ask God, why didn't it work out? When we buy cars that we cannot afford, when we rent apartments that we cannot afford, when we get in relationships that we cannot come, afford, oh, come on, somebody. We put ourselves in messes and then we ask God, get me out of this mess and I'll serve you the rest of my life. Have you ever said that prayer before? We love the part about Jesus being a savior. But there's possibly people here tonight that they don't love the part about Jesus being Lord. Lord meaning that, God, you have complete control of my life. That even when I don't understand what you're doing, I'm going to trust you at your word. You've already brought me this far, so I'm going to continue to trust you. Do I have anyone here tonight that's willing to step out of the bow and step out of their comfort zone and saying, God, I'm going to keep my eyes on you. I'm not going to focus on the storm. I'm not going to focus on the waves. But I know if I keep my eyes on you that I will do miraculous things. Look at your neighbor and say, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. We need servants. We also need servant leaders. There may be some people here tonight that you, you possibly want the platform. You, you like the part about preaching, and, and, and you like when your, 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 your picture's on Instagram when you're doing the Pastor Phil pose. You like that part. But in reality, those that are, are leading at a high capacity, they're actually serving at a higher capacity. 
we only see what pastor is doing here at church on Sunday morning and Wednesday, but we're not there when he's counseling people, when he's answering those calls early in the morning and, and late at night and, and thinking, God, what, what, what are you doing in the midst of this season? Do, do I open the church? Do I not open the church? And, and, and there's people that are still out there. And this is the toughest time ever to be a pastor, to be a leader. But we need servant leaders. We just don't need good preachers. We need people that are willing to serve. We need people that are willing to build. To say, man, I'll, I'll put on my helmet. Just give me a hammer. I may not know what I'm doing, like, but, but just give me a flashlight. I'll do something because I, I want to be a part of building something. Do I have anyone here tonight that wants to build in the Mother Church gang? No, no, you're not convincing me here tonight. In 2021, this is a year of building. This is a year where we're coming united in one mind and one accord, the third wave. It's not just a slogan. It's not just a hashtag. It's not just something that looks good on a shirt. It is a will thing. We're coming together as a church, united, locking arms, the gang, the victory home. We're taking our place and saying, Pastor, if you want to use me, I'm here. I'm ready to put on my combat boots. I'm ready to put on the full armor of God and serve at whatever kind capacity you need me to serve in look to your neighbor say servants we need servant leaders in 2021 you see Jesus was the greatest example of that the Bible says that he didn't come to be served but to serve others we see it there where he was willing to to wash the disciples feet he was willing to serve what a great example. How, how, many, how much more should we serve other people? You see, in Victor Arch, we have a, a unique anointing, a special anointing to reach out to the down and outer, to reach out to the hurting people of this world. But if you're not willing to get dirty, do you remember the last time you were, were around a drug addict? Do you remember what a drug addict smells like? When, when was the last time you evangelized or you, you reached the soul? When was the last time you sent a text following up with somebody that you haven't seen in a while? In order to build this ministry, we need to be willing to reach out to people. Because ministry is people. And God's heart is people. I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt that, like I said, in the, in the body of Christ, there's many great churches. But I believe Victory Outreach is the heart of God. Because that's where it was birthed. It wasn't birthed in East L.A. This ministry was birthed in the heart of God. There was a need in the inner cities that no one else wanted to meet. So God raised up a humble couple to say, we will go into a city that we do not know. We'll open up a church. We'll invite drug addicts, gang members, and their families. Believe they can get saved and not only saved, but get raised up and used for the work of the ministry. We're part of something great. We come from a lineage of people that were willing to serve. The pioneers were willing to serve. The Joshua generation was willing to serve. Now the question I have for you tonight, is the third wave willing to serve? We need to serve in unity like our pastor's been talking about. We're united in Christ. We're united in the mission that God has given us, and we're also united in the promises I already talked about Isaiah 45, that we're continuing to reach treasure out of darkness, hidden riches in secret places. But also Isaiah 54 is talking about the descendants. Who are the descendants? It's you and I. The descendants are you and I. I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt that in this church we are going to raise up some arrows to different parts of the world, different cities, different countries, different continents. But the question I have for you tonight is what type of arrow are you going to be? Are you going to be a dull arrow? Are you going to be one of those rubber arrows that you got to lick before you shoot? That when you melt, when pressure comes? Are you going to be an arrow that's on the cutting edge, that you're sharp? Where you're just intentive and you're in tune with what God has called you to do? Because these cities are not just going to be given to us. 
we got to dispossess. But if we're going to dispossess and take nations, we need to take our city first. There's people here in our city, in our community that are lost and hurting, and they're looking for the answer, and we know that answer. What's that answer? That answer is Jesus Christ. I'm looking at a group of dispossessors, descendants, that are going to rise up like that song I was talking about. Rise up and be everything that God has called them to be. Can I get an amen here tonight? Also another area we need to shift in. We need to shift from being passive to being passionate. Let me say that again. From being passive to being passionate. If we want to see something new take place in and through our lives, this year in our church, in our ministry, in our gang, this year cannot be business as usual. We cannot just go through the motions of serving God. The religion of knowing when to clap. Knowing when to say amen. Amen. When to say hallelujah. The religion of just coming to receive a good word and posting it on, on Instagram and not remembering the next week what was preached. It cannot be business as usual. It cannot just be going through the motions. Time is of the essence. I'm here to remind you that Jesus is coming back for his church. How many see the signs? There needs to be a people that are willing to be passionate for the things of God. The Bible reads there in Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 that whatever you do, do your work heartedly as for the Lord rather than for men. That means that whatever area we put our hands to the plow, we're doing it unto the Lord. Whether it's seen or it's unseen, we need to be passionate. I like what Edgar says, is the way you'll do one thing is the way you'll do everything. Meaning that if you don't have a good testimony there at your job, if I were to talk to your boss, what would they say about you? If I were to go into your room, what would it look like? If I were to go into your car, what would it look like? If I would look at your Chase Bank, what, what, what would you be spending your money on? What you're passionate about will be priority in your life. Now maybe you're here tonight and you say maybe your fire has dwindled. That you've lost sight of your vision and you're not as passionate as you once were. How do you get this passion? First of all, you get this passion by seeking the face of God. We need to be a generation that's not just doing but being. Not just doing the work or the task, but truly being in tune with God, what God desires to do in and through our lives. I encourage you, join the fast. Die to yourself. Put the flesh into subjection. Because if you feed the flesh, that's what will come out. But if you feed the spirit, then the spirit will come out. It's like a diet. If you, all you're eating is cup of noodles with hot Cheetos and a bunch of junk food and all we see is an in and out and jack in the box then you wonder why you don't have a summer body but if you eat the right things if you're willing to work out even when you don't feel like it you're willing to eat those vegetables even when you don't feel like it well guess what you're going to start seeing results you're going to start feeling better about yourself it's the same thing when we seek the face of God when we fast, when we, when we pray, little by little by little, we'll see that we find ourselves changing. That we're not talking the way we used to talk. That we're not acting the way we used to act. What used to be appetizing to us, what we used to, desire, what we used to want to taste, we don't want to taste those things anymore. When you're seeking the face of God, you don't want to go to the club anymore. When you're seeking the face of God, you don't want to talk to those type of girls anymore. You don't want to talk to those certain guys anymore. Because that thing's not appealing to you. Because as you mature in the things of God, your taste palate should mature. As you seek the face of God, then you have a deeper desire to want to get into his presence. First it's a discipline. Then it's a desire. Then it becomes a delight. Where you wake up in the morning and you can't wait to pray. You wake up in the morning and you can't wait to get into the word of God. You wake up in the morning, you can't wait to listen to worship. 
worship. You can't wait to listen to a message because you just want more. You're more. You have a posture of hunger. You're hungry. You're at the edge of your seat, and you're receiving the preaching. You're receiving the message. See, those that are receiving it, they're clapping. Those that don't want this, they're not clapping. But those that really want it, they're there, and they say, feed me more, feed me more, feed me more, because I want to grow. Recently, Alexis told me that there's a slogan for the city of Chino that it says, Chino, the city where everything grows. Let that be us this year. Victory Outreach Chino, the Mother Church Gang, the place where everything grows. How many want to grow here tonight? How many want to be rooted and planted by the trees of living water? I encourage you, if you haven't already, register. Get ready for the Power Prayer Summit. You notice we're not just calling it Prayer Summit. We're calling it Power Prayer Summit. Because we want to experience the power of God. Because I believe we have been experiencing the power of God on gang nights. We have been experiencing the power of God on Wednesday nights, on, 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 on fire power, the different Sunday mornings. We have been experiencing the power of God. So when we come together and we come united, seeking the face, his face, then we will see great things take place. Like I said, as we pray, things begin to change. So we want to pray. You get passion by winning a soul, like I talked about earlier. When, you, so when somebody truly has passion, it will also cause you to take ownership. Look at your neighbor and say, ownership. You start looking at things differently. You don't look at it as, that's the church. That's my church. You don't look at it as just the pastor. You say, that's my pastor. You don't look at it as just the gang. No, 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 that's my gang. I'm taking ownership. So I'm willing to do everything with passion because I want to see this thing built for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen here tonight? I'm almost done. We also need to make the shift. From being greedy to being a giver. To give what? To give of our time. I mentioned earlier, we will always make time for what is priority in our lives. I know Ephraim already talked about being available. That's what our founder always says. It's not about your ability, but it's about your availability. That's what we're doing here tonight. Those that are here in person, you're giving God your time. You're saying instead of binge watching this show and that show and watching that I shouldn't be watching, I want to be in the presence of God because I'm putting him first. He is a priority in my life. What do we also need to give? We need to give our talent. God has gifted us. He's given you abilities to help grow the kingdom. But the question I have for you tonight, are you trying to grow God's kingdom or possibly are you trying to grow your own kingdom? It's not about your Instagram followers. It's not about that. It's not about being TikTok famous. Do I believe God can use influence? I truly believe God can use influencers. And I believe that there's leaders here where God's going to give you influence. But let's be influencers for Christ. Instead of trying to make ourselves famous, let's make Jesus famous. Let's make the mother church famous. Let's make the gang famous. Right? We should be unashamed about posting that we're here. We should say, man, this is my gang. Man, I'm excited about being here. Man, I love the gang. I want to be an influencer for Christ. I, I want people to get reached. I want people to get saved. So whatever I do, whether it's just a simple post, that is a form of evangelism. Like I said, God has given you a talent to help contribute to the body of Christ. Like I said, there's ministry involvement. There's some people here. You need to get involved in the prayer ministry. There's some people here tonight, you need to get involved in the evangelism ministry. You need to get involved in the worship. You need to get involved in the media. You need to get involved in the ushers and the greeters and the welcome center. Also get involved in one of our tiers. We have the movement of young adults. We also have high school impact. We also have a radical group of junior hires called the New Gen. Get involved. Be an influencer for Christ. What do we also need to give? We need to give our treasure. You see, the rich young ruler is a prime example of somebody that didn't own his possessions, but his possessions owned him. It's amazing. It's amazing how small a $20 bill will look at the mall, but how big it looks when it comes to offering time.
You're like, $20, what can I do with that? What can I do with these $20? But when it comes to giving tithes, when it comes to giving offering, when it comes to the pledge, you want to hold it tight. Why? Because when you have that $20 at the mall, you believe you're getting something in return for what you're giving. But in reality, when you give to God, you're making an investment to the kingdom. So instead of buying Cinnabon, Instead of buying Wetzel Pretzel, let's be a people that give to God. Let's be a people that just don't rent this vision but take ownership of it. Let's be those people that have an open hand policy with God and saying, God, whatever I have, it belongs to you because I understand if it wasn't for you, I would have nothing in the first place. The Bible reads in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your heart tonight? Where is your heart at tonight? Do you find yourself in a place where you're greedy and you want to hold and, and you don't want to give nothing? Or are you a person that's willing to give and saying, God, whatever I have belongs to you? Our pastor said last week that as we continue to sacrifice, you will not look at it as a sacrifice. You'll look at it as an investment. You and I are called to build this church. But we need people that are willing to give. To pay your tithe. What's a tithe? It's 10%. And it's not for God's benefit. It's for your benefit. There's people that they don't give, they don't tie, but then they wonder why they're always broke. They wonder why they never have enough. It's because you're not trusting God. It's like going through a McDonald's drive through How many like McDonald's? Right? I know there's people that love McDonald's and people love the McNuggets, right? The 10-piece chicken McNuggets. God just wants one nugget. Come on. He just wants one. Just, you can eat the other nine. But when it comes to nuggets, you don't want to share with nobody. That's how some of us are with finances. God just wants one. He just wants 10%. And we can manage the other 90. But what happens when we don't give the 10%, then the 100% is cursed. And it will not be blessed. We need people that are willing to give, to pay your tithes. Like I said, to play pay pledges. And what I love about our church is that when we pay our pledges, we see action. We talked about getting carpet when we didn't have carpet in here. We needed to pick up a pledge. All of a sudden, we got carpet. We needed more chairs. All of a sudden, we got more chairs. We wanted to build these stairs. We got more stairs. We wanted the LEDs. We got the LEDs. We wanted to, the Victory Cafe. We got the Victory Cafe. And we wanted to improve the kids' game. We got the kids' game. Then we wanted to improve the, the, the camera, the social media, the media. All of a sudden, now we're seeing progression. Now, my friend, I want you to look right to the right. There's an area where there's a lot of grass. You know what's going to be there? A building's going to be there. We're building a base here. And it's going to cause you and I as a third way to be willing to say, God, I'm willing to give. This is my church. I want to see soul saved. So I'm willing to, to contribute. I'm willing to do my part because I want to be blessed. I am part of the God's anointed now generation. Be willing to give. Also united we can. We're not just talking about taking the world. We are taking the world for Jesus. Our ministry is willing to do whatever so that we can see lives change for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. Are you united? We can't give her here tonight. If Edgar were to look at your report, what, what would we see? If you're not even a dollar a day giver, but we always see you with fresh Yeezys. We always see you with the freshest kicks. We always see you with holy genes. But you're not willing to give to the vision. Like I said, we're, we, we come from a legacy of people that are willing to give. We come from people that maybe they didn't have all the talent, they didn't have all the ability, but they were willing to sacrifice and they were willing to give to the mission.
to the vision that God has given us. Can I get an amen here tonight? Amen. Almost at my last point. We need to make the shift from merely surviving to thriving. We are not called just to survive. We are not called just to barely make it. I don't know about you, but God has done too much in my life to live in average Christianity. It's like God has done too much in my life. I've seen too much. I've seen too many treasure out of darkness get reached. I've seen too many people that were nothing all of a sudden have something. I've seen too many people get raised up to be pastors. and be. I've seen too many miracles before my very eyes to live in average, barely making it, Christianity. We are not called just to survive. Last year may have been a challenging year for you, but I'm here to declare to you tonight that you have the victory. If you're part of this church, you have the victory. We are victory outreach. We are not defeated outreach. We have the victory here tonight. The Bible reads in Romans 8, 31 that if God is for us, who can be against us? The Bible also says in Romans 8, verse 37 that we are more than conquerors. Let this be the year, gang, where we flourish and we thrive and be everything that God has called us and destined us to be. Do you believe that here tonight? No, do you believe that here tonight? Let's be those spies like Joshua and Caleb. Yes, there may be giants. Yes, there may be challenges in the land, but let us be those ones to say, yes, the giants may be big, but my God is bigger. My God is bigger than any pandemic. My God is bigger than any social injustice. My God is bigger than anything we're facing here tonight. If God is for us, who can be against us? Walk in victory. Walk with your head up high and keep marching forward. Keep pressing on towards the mark because I'm here to declare to you, that God, I said that God is not done with you. Do you believe that here tonight? Only clap if you believe it. If you believe it, clap. Shout with the voice of triumph. This is the year where we are going to thrive. In the Mother Church gang, everybody stand. We are going to make history. We are, we are. We are the third wave of revival. We are the third wave. And it's time for us to take our place, to make the shifts, to say this is going to be the year where I thrive. This is going to be the year where I experience God like never before. It's our time. It's our time to rise up. It's our time to answer the call. It's not time to play games anymore. It's time to fully surrender and to say, God, I'm here. And I want to make the shift. And I want to be used by you. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship. No, I'm choosing for something great. I hear you call my name. I know I'm chosen, and it's my time. I serve you. I serve you all my life.
here tonight, whether you're here in person, whether you're watching online, and you want to be a part of what God wants to do here this year, if you want to make the shifts, say, God, I want to be everything you've called me to be. I don't want to focus on the distractions. I don't want to focus about what's taking place in the world. I want to keep my eyes on you. Fully surrender. If that's you, I want you to come to the altar right now. As the worship continues to sing, you say, I want to thrive. I know I want to make the shift. For something great.
know, I, t- I, uh, I told this story a while back. Uh, when my daughter was real little, my youngest daughter, she would, uh, she would do what babies do. And when she had a dirty diaper, I said, no, that's nasty. But she would look at me, and I remember she would cry, and she would say these words. Let's see if you guys can guess it, right? change me. And I remember one time God spoke to me so heavy, so heavy, and I told this story, I believe, a couple, once or twice. My daughter was crying, like, hysterically, and she was looking up at me, and she was crying, and she was saying the words, change me. Right? Change me, cry, as she's crying, tears coming down her eyes, and when I, when I saw that, I couldn't help but feel the pressing upon my heart. That's what God desires, for us to come to him with that brokenness, with our arms lifted up, looking up to God, saying, God, change me. Change me. How many want to change here tonight? I want you to lift your hands up just for a second. And I want everybody to participate. Not a single person. If you see somebody that's not participating, I want you to lift up your hands. And I want you to look up, right? Look up right there. And I want you to just right there where you're at, just begin to pray that prayer, God, change me. Watch what happens. Some of you, you're going to have such a heavy encounter with God, and some of you, he's going to show you exactly what it is that he wants you to change. (laughs) Right there where you're at, as we play real quick, just a few more seconds, I want you to begin to pray right now. Pray, say, God, change me. God, give me the strength to change. Oh, in the name of Jesus, come on, say that prayer. God, change me. Oh, I want to shift some areas in my life. Oh, God, I give you access. I give you liberty in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, I pray you begin to show them. Begin to show us, God. Oh, God, as a, as young people, God, as leaders, God, as a church, God, the Lord, areas you want us to shift in, God, to be in unity, God, to be givers, God, to be inclusive, God, oh, God, Lord, all these areas you want us to change, to be surrendered in the name of Jesus right now. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Come on, don't look around. Come on, don't look around. Close your eyes. Lift your hands and say that prayer. God, change me. Oh, Lord, God, I want to be new. God, I want to be different. God, I want to shift, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you tonight, God, of what you're doing, God. I pray you seal, God, everything that took place, Master. By that word, God, and not just tonight, you just you've been continuing to bombard us. Even this morning, God, you've been uh, bombarding us with your precious word, God, and challenging us with your word. God, I pray that we would be a generation that responds to your word. Thank you, Jesus. And all the gang says, come on, come on, all the gang says, all the gang says, come on, and the third wave says, and the new gen says, the high school says, the young adults say, come on, and all of the gang says, Come on, I'll give Jesus a big hand. Amen. And what-
What a powerful service. Come on, X, right? What a powerful service. At this time, we're getting ready to dismiss. Right before I dismiss, I want to say that we're going to have a very special meeting right now with, with a couple of us here. But listen, if you feel challenged, I know Xavier talked about involvement, right? X talked about involvement and getting plugged in and getting connected. If you're not involved in anything, but you have a, like a desire to be a part, just stick around for a little bit. We're going to be having a meeting here, uh, and I'm going to just make a quick little change in what we were planning on doing. But if you want to be involved and connected and be a part of something, stick around. We're going to be having a short huddle right here at this altar. So God bless you guys. You guys are dismissed. Have a good night.